Hello everyone, it's Miss Solis, and today we are doing another chapter of The Devil's Gaspel. I believe I'm over here. Chapter 2, Save My Soul. Two days have gone by, and while my heart continues to mourn and shudder at what had occurred to me and the teenagers, something in my soul feels lighter and free. Why do I feel this way? What happened to me? Is it because I am closer to being free from the she-witch? No, I cannot allow myself to feel as such. And yet, three souls down. Four to go. Here, let me help you up the stairs. Thank you. A gentle arm around me guiding my steps up to my room. I no longer need the, to rest at the clinic, so I am allowed sanctuary in my church. I am both thankful yet unexpected and excited to return with the devil girl who marked my room as her own. If I am lucky, then the abomination will not be there when she, we reach the top of the stairs. Helen opens the door to my room, void of anyone. Thank God. I can walk to my bed on my own from here. Thank you, Helen, for your, for your assistance. Absolutely. I've sent messages to my professors about what happened, and they're okay with me working here until you fully recover. I can only nod. I am not well enough to perform my usual duties or lead in any prayers. However, Helen can greet and guide visitors without needing to do as I do for them. I let my body sink into my bed. In instinctively shut my eyes. It is not as comfy as the clinic bed, but it is my bed nonetheless. I can barely hear Helen slowly walk down of the room and close the door behind her. At last, a moment to myself in my own room. Welcome home, sweetie. I can't stop the growl that escapes me. You disgust me. That's not what you said when we met. I have no strength to toss her out. I can only grumble and sink further into my mattress. Leave me in peace. Get me four more souls. <clears throat> no matter how much I ar argue with her, she will not leave me be. I might as well remain silent. After all, she is allowed... She is a foul beast with a strong hold on my soul. At any moment, she can pull me under, and it would be lost forever. She knows how to silence me in the end. I keep my eyes closed and try to let sleep take hold of me. The faster I recover, the faster I can remove myself from the room and continue my work as a preacher. A preacher, me. Am I really deserving of that title after what has happened? Should I even follow, even allow myself to recover? I'll be taken at the end of the week. I refuse to take another life. And yet some darker part of me is desperate for me to. This feeling of euphoria, the taste of, of almost being free from this happy har harpy is blissful or sinful you know your soul belongs to me right fire flames licking my arms my neck my chest i'm going to have so much fun with you i can't stop it's too hot i'm burning up someone help me scream all you like no one will see God, forgive me. Lead me through this flame and show me mercy. God can't save you. No! <sighs> God, Pastor Harlow. <clears throat> a nightmare? Yes. Only a nightmare. The air around me is normal. The sight of my room is real. I am okay. Helen sits on a wooden stool beside the bed, holding a plate of food for me. When did she... Helen, 
Are you okay? You looked like you were having a terrible nightmare. Uh. Well, we can do either. It was terrible and tell her what the hell just happened or, yeah, it was a nightmare, but uh, I'm fine. I cannot let her know what I had imagined. It was a nightmare, fictitiously. It was not worth her worry. I was, I was just remembering the accident. I, I, I'm fine now, I promise. Another lie. How many lies will I tell? A grimace, yet a gaze full of understanding. All right. As you say, Pastor. Helen lifts the plate of food to show me what she brought me. Simple cheese curds and bread with melon slices. A simple meal, but one I am thankful for. Here, to help bring your energy up. You have to eat properly. I could only nod, unable to say any more. Time escapes me as I slowly nibble on the food, my jaw adjusted to the remaining silent in slumber. It aches as I open it to welcome the bread. I must look pathetic, but it is what I can do for now. Eventually I will recover from this and I will move again. Maybe I can find a way out of this hellish contract I am bound to. One could only hope. Helen leaves me after feeding me, taking to the now empty plate with her. Looking outside, it's dark, and I know she will have to lock up and leave. As I hear the echo of the front doors locking, I let out a sigh. I am back to being alone with a devil. That's when I hear it. Hello, Pastor Harlow? Shouting from outside my door, it is faint, barely stretching through the cracks to my ears. What is going on? Are you there? I really need to speak to you if you don't mind. I form myself out of bed, rushing towards my door to figure out who was calling for me. I don't recognize the voice. Jeez, I didn't know you were such a wildly desired preacher. I can't help but glare in her direction. What did you do? Again, you're blaming me for shit I didn't do. Maybe someone's desperate to sing Kumbaya with you before going home. I don't know. I lick my tongue in dis- I click my tongue in disapproval and continue towards the door. I could hear the woman who was asking for me reach the top of the stairs. Now, before you do that... Enough out of you! I mean it, you might want to hear what I... Why? I grab hold of the doorknob and force the door open, pushing it out to receive my guests. Ah! I can only stare as the woman who was reaching for my doorknob in return is forced back from the door and starts to tumble down the stairs. Huh? Dying, breaking her neck. How? No. She, she, she's... The party's just twisted and broken. I, I swear I can't do anything with you. I told you to hold on. She, she did to warn me not to do that. <laughs> the devil isn't always sad. The woman, how did she, when did she, why did, it had to be her fault. She had something to do with this. I turn and glare at the devil, knowing that she has made me murder, this murder occur. You caused this. You can't blame me for this one. I grab the cross that hangs from my door and hold it towards her, the sheet witch. Be gone, spawn of Satan. Are you serious right now? <laughs> that doesn't work. The power of Christ compels you from this holy sanctuary. Dude, you're embarrassing yourself. Put that down. <laughs> I am this devil. <laughs> Sounds like a normal day at the office for me. I grip my teeth and tighten my hold on my cross, unrelenting in the desire to remove her from my life. The devil finally stops smiling and just glares at me. I said, put it down. Like I would obey her. I drop my cross as it suddenly ignites into flame in my hand. It clatters to the floor and stops burning at last, leaving a dark char in its wooden build. 
How did she know that couldn't happen? Are you done having a tantrum? Do you need a pacifier too? Oh, oh that, that, that's impossible. The devil stares at me in disbelief. No unholy being can overpower God's light. How is she able to light his symbol in a flame? <sighs> Humans are fucking stupid, I swear. I'm with you with that on that too, girl. She walks over and picks up the cross, clutching it in between her hands. Technically, devils shouldn't be able to do that, but... First of all, wooden cross. Easily ignitable. Idiot. <laughs> Simple physics and science. <laughs> oh, face sucks. She then snaps the cross into two pieces and drops both to the floor. Part of my soul tears at the sight. Three steps towards the door. Steps forward, she grasps the collar of my shirt, pulling me to her in an almost deathly grasp. The stench of her breath penetrates my nose, and, the, and I wince at how close her face is to mine. Second, your soul is mine, bitch. As long as you carry my marks, no holy magic can save you from me. Fair enough. You did sign a contract. You're hers. No. No, I wouldn't let her control me. Now, you should be happy that you got another kill. That's one more soul you don't need to hunt for. I grab at her wrists and try to force her off me, but she tightens her grip and lifts my shirt higher, forcing me to arc back. She leans in, nose to nose with me, and I can't help but scowl. Four down, three to go. <laughs> Damn! So, that was chapter two. God dang. Yeah. I hoped you guys liked that one. And uh, that was... It wasn't as exciting as the last one. I mean, how can you beat Dinosaur Erotica? I'm sorry. And if you don't, wa don't know what I'm talking about, go to the last chapter. And you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. Okay. So, uh, chapter three next time, and until then, have a great day and beautiful life. Bye, guys.